guys so today i thought i'd do a little bit of a voiceover only i'm not going to be talking about this piece um i might here and there throw something in but i thought maybe i would talk about my art background and kind of where i started and stuff like that so uh where do i begin <laughs> when i was little i guess i drew a lot with my sister um, she's always definitely been the better artist and it never really crossed my mind that art could be a career. Um, so, you know, I used to draw on like computer paper and stuff like that. And then in high school, um, I didn't even start out by taking any art classes in high school. Like I chose different electives and, um, then I was seeing what my sister was doing and I was like, oh man, maybe I would love that. So I ended up switching into some art classes. Um, just one every year you were allowed at my school, pretty much. Um, and they were great. I loved my teachers in high school. Mr. Strand and Miss Sessa were the best. But I still was like, oh, this is just a fun hobby that I'm trying to get better at. Uh, I did for a minute think maybe I would do computer graphics and like animation, which isn't that much fine art, which is what I'm more into. It was a lot of like, I don't know, it's just typography and stuff like that that I really didn't care about. So I don't know why I thought I would like that, but I graduated high school and went to college just a state school um they didn't have a fine art program and they they had a computer graphics not computer graphics it was called like communications or something um and it was a new what's it called major for the school and everyone who was in that major had to basically was in the every class together because it was such a small program where usually if you go to a college here in the United States, you have a bunch of different classes and in every class there's probably different students. Um, and that also depends on your degree, but yeah, it was kind of like being back in elementary school because the people you start the day with were the people you spent your day with and you saw them every day of the week. Uh, so I actually only did one semester there. I had an art history class, which I thought was very interesting, but I was also kind of like, I don't care, because we started out with um, cavemen, basically. And while that's interesting, I don't want to talk about it for several months. You know, like I, I got the gist a little sooner than that. <laughs> um, and then... So with art history, I had a typography class, which was interesting to learn about, but definitely not something I was interested in doing myself. There was um, like a composition type of class where we would have to cut up photos that we found in magazines and make a bigger picture, not like a collage, because we had to... It was basically like practicing where to place things in an image so that it drew the eye where you wanted it to go. Um, that class, I did really well in it, kind of was second nature. Um, but I understand why it's a class because a lot of people, you know, maybe, maybe it doesn't come as easy to them. And there was one fine art class, which I loved, but the thing is, with that program, since it was mainly like graphic design type of curriculum, at least in the future it was going to be more like that, a lot of the students weren't really into art the way I was. You know, they would draw, um, but it wasn't at the same level. They weren't bad, but I felt like I was the only one who really loved fine art. Um, we had to do one still life in that class, a very, very simple one, and then we did figure drawing of each other for like two days, 
which I love so much. It's one of my favorite things to do from life. Um, and it's tricky to do, especially if you've never done it before, but um, I kind of felt like I was the only one really enjoying it. Everyone was always complaining and then coming over to me being like, oh, you know, kids, kids are kind of assholes sometimes, especially if you're better at them than something and they don't understand it. They're like, uh, what, what do you practice all the time or something and as though that's a bad thing? And I didn't. I, I really had kind of given up at that point and I had a lot of mental health stuff going on at that point, so I was barely... Um, really putting effort into school anymore. I was like kind of giving up. So anyway, I dropped out pretty much as soon as the second semester started. I just felt like it wasn't for me and uh, it wasn't really going where I wanted it to go. So then a lot of shit happened and I think I dropped out in 2011 or 2012 and then I barely picked up a pencil until 2018. I had a lot of stuff going on. I kind of, I think, tried to replace art, or at least uh, fine art, with makeup and hair and color like that. And for a little bit, I thought it was fulfilling me, and I thought it was going to be something I really wanted to do. But then, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. I had a breakup in... I guess 2017, like right before 2018, and maybe it was just like the sadness of that that really made me want to draw again, but a few months after the breakup, I started drawing again, and from then on, I haven't stopped, and it's like something I've been thinking about all the time, and there are so many things I'm excited to learn, like different mediums and stuff, and I want to work on like really big projects. I'm just really excited about my future in regards to art so yeah I have a lot of ideas for projects I want to do there's a lot of stuff that I want to do that's um not digital and it's kind of hard to film I have to get one of those tripods for my phone because I sold my camera um so I can kind of record while I'm drawing or painting on an easel, not on my iPad. I don't know how that would go because those take far longer <laughs> than my iPad stuff and would probably take far longer to edit and upload and all that. Um, so I don't even know if it would be worth it, if you guys would even be interested. And I also want to mention, I know this is on my main channel and not my art channel, but I'm like, screw it. I built this channel based on who I am and if you like me and you want to see like my art journey cool stay subscribed because I'll probably do voiceovers for most of my painting videos from now on I just find them a little more enjoyable to watch but if you're not interested at all that's fine um, I don't really care about the number you know I'm sure it'll start dropping but I don't know, I just feel so connected to this channel, which may sound stupid to someone who's never had a channel before, <laughs> but I kind of feel dumb just abandoning it and starting a new one that I just kind of feel unconnected to. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do that. Like I said in one of my previous videos, I may upload a review here and there of like a makeup product or something if I feel it's necessary. But I'm not forcing myself to do that anymore. It's just not my passion. And I'm glad that I have recognized that because I am so much happier. And I really genuinely thought it wasn't possible to feel this way or to feel like a passion in this way, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. I used to see people be like, oh, you know, I love what I do. And every day I wake up and it's I'm so excited to maybe get home and do this or go to work and do this I always thought they were full of shit and kind of just like maybe trying to make you jealous but I genuinely when I wake up in the morning or like I'm at work I can't wait to get home and not just because I want to go to sleep 
and like cry and be depressed it's because I'm like oh when I get home I'm gonna do a second layer on this painting and it's and then I'll like glaze this other painting that I've been working on you know like I have a lot of stuff that I'm working on that I'm excited about and I'm not always pleased with the outcome of any of it honestly there are a few that I love but a lot of them I just see flaws and I know that's normal um but for pretty much every piece that I start, I start off in kind of a messy layer of like blocking in and maybe I shouldn't do that anymore, but it just discourages me so much because it looks messy and it doesn't look the way I'm envisioning it because I'm already envisioning it being done and the vibe I want from it. And maybe I'm just comparing it to that and thinking wow it's never going to get to that look at where you started you know give up now and that's how I feel every time I start a piece I'm like wow throw this out and don't even bother touching it and then I'll come back to it a few days later and really go at it for a few hours and then I'm like okay this is exactly what I was going for and I get even more excited than I was when I even thought of the piece and I end up finishing it really quickly. Whereas in the beginning, it just, it takes me a long time to really start something. Like, I have this piece staring at me right now on my easel that I started a couple days ago. I drew it out pretty quickly, and then I blocked in a lot of the darks. And since then, I haven't even wanted to touch it because I'm like, you need to throw that out and just start something else. I just want to mention here, I made a new uh, canvas on Procreate because, um, well, basically it limits the amount of layers you have depending on how large your file is. So I, instead of deleting all the old ones and stuff, I was like, I'm just going to copy this, paste it on a new one, and build up on that. And this is kind of the final adjustments before I do like hair and all that kind of detail and like color adjustments. So. I just kind of like starting on a fresh, flattened canvas. Anyway, um, yeah, so I have this piece that I've been staring at, and I know as soon as I start it, uh, you know, I'm of course I'll make mistakes and stuff, but as soon as I really get going, I'm not going to want to stop, and then I'm going to have trouble waking up for work and, and even leaving work. Not because I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to work. Sometimes, of course, I feel like that because... I mean, I work retail and it's not a ton of fun. Um, but for the most part now, it's just like I don't want to leave because there's so much I want to do in regards to my art. Um, and that's a nice feeling because that feeling used to just be I don't want to go because I don't want to get out of bed ever. And I just want to lay here and kind of let the world pass me by, if you know what I mean. So... It's nice to know that that's a real thing, and maybe it's not going to be, I mean, it probably won't be forever, this feeling, but I know at least when times get tough for me again, I can look to this and be like, well, you thought forever that you would never be happy, and that this is just what life was, and that you were always going to be depressed and suicidal and stuff, but I can look to this and be like, hey... You thought that then, and then look at what happened. You know, you had moments of, like, wonderful happiness and, like, not even happy. Like, just being content and looking forward to things. And I think that's very helpful, especially um, just because of some of the stuff I've gone through in my life. It's pretty easy for me to convince myself that it's not worth going on and stuff like that and like all these things happened and it's for a reason and you shouldn't bother but I have something else to put my energy into and something to I guess distract me or to help me get my feelings out there and maybe my piece doesn't look you know the way I imagine it does to you like maybe I have a piece that screams oh you know, moving on from, like, 
depression or something, but to you, you're like, oh, that's such a pretty, like, delicate application or something. <laughs> I know art is subjective, and you're all, you, well, you all get a different feeling from it and a different vibe than maybe what I'm trying to put out, but I think that's kind of the beauty of art. You know, like, kind of like songs, maybe except for like really obvious pop songs where you really can't interpret the lyrics any other way. Um, I think it's nice that everyone else can interpret it in a different way. And like the lyrics or the painting and get something from it and have a connection to it, even if it's not the feeling that you intended to give off or the vibe you intended to give off or anything. It's nice that people have a connection to it anyway, and I think that's kind of what matters. I always wonder that, like, with lyrics, if artists are bothered that, like, oh, I feel a connection to this song because this, this, and this, and it has nothing to do with why they wrote it. I always wondered if it bothered them. From a painting standpoint, it wouldn't bother me, but I guess it is a very different craft, and, uh... I'm definitely not on the same level as like a songwriter and I know this is totally rambling but I'm not the type of person who's like oh this shows the beauty of the world and the darkness of the world and all that jazz. I think that's really cool um, but I'm not like a philosophical I guess it would be the word type of person like I don't there are artists like Cesar Santos who does like really beautiful stuff and he has like a message that he's trying to convey. Um, and that's awesome, but I don't think it's necessary for every artist to have something like that. Um, I think as long as you get out what you're trying to get out, that's all that really matters. And so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing every time I paint. And I know, you know, some people don't like it because some of the stuff I do is a little bit darker, I guess. I know my mom <laughs> doesn't like some of the portraits I do because she says they're creepy, but they have the vibe that I know that I really just want to go for all the time. And that resonates with me because some of them, I don't know, I don't really want to get into why some of them I do certain features and stuff. But I resonate with certain aspects of everything I paint or draw, and I think that's what matters. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I kind of wish I did go to art school. Like, oh, sorry, my cat's crying. <laughs> She's not going to stop. She thinks I'm talking to her. I want to go to, like, an academy, you know, like something cool and learn a ton of stuff. But they're expensive, and the ones that are by me are full-time, and I can't afford to not work right now, and my hours would conflict. It's just a, a whole thing. So for now, I'm just going to learn what I can on YouTube and, and the internet, and I feel like I'm learning a lot, especially because people like Cesar Santos and Proko have all these insane videos out where they show you everything. Um... I think it's really cool that we live in that kind of age where you don't necessarily have to go to a crazy expensive academy in Italy. You can you can learn yourself, although you're not technically teaching yourself, you're just kind of not paying someone to learn. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you liked having a voiceover better than just the same song over and over again that's not a good song because it's from the youtube library <laughs> um yeah thanks guys